Hi, my name is Dan Freeman. I'm a bassist, producer, Ableton certified trainer, and a New York City dub spot instructor. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to set up Ableton Live to use it as live effects processor for a guitar or bass. I just want to go through the basic flow for taking audio into Ableton. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set up an audio track. So once I have my audio track set up, I'm going to go to Ableton's Preferences. Now in the Preferences, you want to go to the Audio tab. And in the Audio tab, first you want to set the audio input device. In this case, this is the, uh, the Motu sound card that I'm using. Now I'm going to go to the Input Configurations. And here in the Input Configurations, you're going to see all the possible channels the Motu takes in. Just one thing is I would just try to keep the channels to a minimum because every time you open a new channel for an input, it takes up more CPU. And especially for live performance, you want to be really careful with keeping your CPU low. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the audio output. And in this case, it's going to be the same sound card. And right here, once again, here are the channels that I'm using uh, for the output. Now, in this case, when I perform, I often have other stuff coming through, drums, sounds, et cetera. So I have more channels open to uh, be output. So the other really important thing that you've got to set up in the audio tab is the buffer size. Now, it's really important for live performance to keep the buffer size low. I generally set mine at 128, but you can even set it at 64 if your computer is powerful enough. Now, the thing you've got to keep in mind is that keeping a low buffer size really also taxes your CPU. So that's a consideration, especially if you're going to be using external plugins within Ableton. I personally, in live performance, try to keep it under 50%. What happens is if you run your CPU hot, then you run the risk of a crash, which is not something you want to have during a live performance. So once we set up Ableton's preferences, we're going to go back to the track, the audio track. And down here on the lower right corner of Ableton's screen, we see a button, which is the I.O. button. It stands for Input Output. So I hit this, and it opens up a menu above the fader. Now, what I want to use for live performance is Monitor In. Typically, it's set to Auto. That's the default. But I'm going to set it here to In. And once that happens, I should be able to play my instrument. <laughs> The minimum setup that you would need to get your laptop going as an effects processor is a sound card, which I have in my live rig right here, the laptop. And I have a pedal board, uh, which I find as a bassist is very useful to control the effects in Ableton Live. Now that you have Ableton set up to take an audio, you can start using Ableton's audio effects. Ableton has 34 audio effects, and these things can be used to just slightly manipulate your sound to completely mangle it up. Plus, you have access to a huge number of Max for Live patches. So I'm going to show you guys how to build just a simple audio effect within Ableton Live for your guitar or bass. So the first thing you want to do is you want to open up the file menu to the left, and we're going to go to Audio Effects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're just going to build a simple wah-wah. So the wah-wah pedal is, for those of you who don't know, is the classic kind of sound used in funk from the 70s on. I'm going to take an auto filter, and I'm going to drop it in to the audio track. Now, the filter I'm going to choose for the wah-wah is what's known as a bandpass filter, this guy right here. So you can hear the difference. This is without the auto filter on. This is with the auto filter. So it's cutting out a lot of the frequencies uh, of the sound. Now, I want to get my auto filter to move. And in order to do this, I'm going to use a, one of the coolest devices that comes with Ableton Live 9, which is the LFO. And the LFO you find in the Max for Live section. So I'm going to go to the Max Audio Effect. And I'm going to go down to the LFO effect. I'm going to drag it in. Now, what the LFO effect is doing is it's just basically going to modulate whatever parameter I tell it to. So I'm going to hit the map here in the LFO, and I'm going to map it to the frequency of the auto filter. 
<laughs> now, now the signal starts going crazy, but we're going to control it a bit. So I'm going to hit the where it says frequency. I'm going to hit that, so I'm going to hit sync. So now it's going to be with the global tempo. And I'm going to change the rate here to sixteenths. So now it's only going to be modulating at sixteenths. And maybe I'll do it a little slower. Uh, let's do it at quarter notes, one fourth. Now, once we do that, we get a sound like this. Now, it's a little bit too over the top. So I'm going to change the depth, which means that I'm not going to have it move so much. I just want it to kind of like move slightly. And this is now the sound I get. So that's a basic wah. If I want to use it for something a little funkier. So one of the most useful things for building effects in Ableton Live is the audio effect rack. And the way you create one is really simple. Go to the first effect, hit shift, and then click the second one, or the third, or the fourth, or whatever, and hit command G. So now it groups it together in a single audio effect rack. This is actually really useful because it enables you to save effects chains together. And the way you do that is right here. I'm going to rename this using command R. I'm going to call this uh, Dan's Wah. And by the way, this basic Wah is going to be available for download with this video. And then right here where the disk icon is, I hit that and it's going to save to the audio effect rack tab within Ableton once I hit return. An audio effect rack is super useful because it enables you to map different parameters of the effects to a macro and then control them using a MIDI device. So the way you do that is you go into the map section of the audio effect rack right here and here in the map section, uh, I'm going to pick uh, just one parameter, let's say the depth of the LFO. And I'm going to hit Control click, and I'm going to say Map to Macro 1. And now you see that the depth is mapped. If I want to add a MIDI device to control this, I'm going to use this Newmark Orbit, which is something that I use for live performance. And I actually strap it on to my bass. So I'm going to plug it in. I'm just going to send MIDI to the laptop. And I'm going to map the knob on the Newmark to the macro. So to map a macro, you're going to hit Command M. And Command M is going to get us into the MIDI map mode within Ableton. Now I'm going to click on the macro for the depth and just turn the knob. You're going to see a little number appear over the knob, which shows that it's mapped. So now whenever you turn the knob here on the orbit, you see that I'm able to turn the macro. And the macro now is affecting the LFO effect within the audio effect rack. Now what's great about these macros is that you can map multiple things to them. I can map 10, 12, 20 parameters, what have you, just to a single knob. So it makes it a really powerful tool for live performance. Now, I just want to show you a demo live set. And within this live set, I'm going to show you another really kind of great feature about Ableton Live 9 and manipulating effects, and that is clip automation. So right here, I have just a basic beat that I can play along to. Here is the bass channel. Now, if I double click and open up the channel, you see that I actually have two audio effect racks. The first is a wah wah that I built for this set, and the second is a bass vocoder. If you want to know more about building a vocoder, check out the tutorial I did on Dubspot's YouTube channel. Now, if you notice in the bass channel, 
I have a couple clips of audio. Now, these clips of audio are not doing anything. You're not actually going to hear them. They're what's known as dummy clips. And the reason I have dummy clips in the audio channel is because this enables me to turn on and off audio effects as I move between scenes. And this is how you do it. I'm going to double click one of these clips. And down here in the clip view, I'm going to go to the button that says E. E opens up the envelope. Right here in the envelope section, I'm going to go to Wawa 3, which is the name of my Wawa. And then in the menu below, the submenu, I'm going to put device on. So now, when you trigger the dummy clip, you're not going to hear the audio coming through the base channel. The whole thing is that it's just going to turn the Wawa effect on. So what that means is that by triggering different dummy clips, you can switch between effects within Ableton Live. So for example, on another clip, the clip below, I have the bass going through a vocoder. Now, when I trigger the clip below it, it's going to turn on my vocoder effect, which sounds like this. Now, I can switch effects just by going between these two clips, which are mapped to different parts of the pedal board. Now, where this can get even more interesting and involved is that within a single clip, you can have multiple effects firing off. So here, in this clip, I'm going to have the wah-wah. It's going to be off for the first part, turn on in the second beat. It's going to go through to another measure and then turn off right at the end. But I'm going to have the vocoder turn on in the first beat, turn itself off, and then appear right at the end. So this one dummy clip is going to kind of move between effects automatically. And just for live performance, a lot of times what I do is I map the pedal to the scenes. And one great thing about doing that, as opposed to mapping them directly to the effects, is that you can also set the BPMs on the scene so the music will move. So I'm just going to do a quick performance just on that one scene going between different effects. So that's how to set up Ableton Live as a live guitar effects processor. The basic wah will be available for download. For more information on Dubspot's classes in New York, Los Angeles, and online, check dubspot.com. I'm Dan Freeman. Thanks a lot for watching. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, Dubspot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you come to the right place. Come explore Dubspot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.